We are back, and we are joined now by Jeremy Gantz, contributing editor of In These Times, whose piece in uh, In These Times is entitled, Two Years In, These Progressive Companies Still Haven't Negotiated First Union Contracts. And I should say progressive is in quotes. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show today, Jeremy. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, so on, on Monday, we were speaking about the historic... Uh, victory at the Chattanooga plant in, in in Tennessee, the VW Chattanooga plant. Um, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of the new, you know, renewed focus I, on labor, I guess, from a national perspective, came in part due to the Starbucks organizing. Right, Starbucks was at the forefront of this. Uh, workers at Starbucks pushing off uh, this this unionization effort. I guess that was last year, really, or a few years ago, maybe. Uh, more, more than two years ago. More started. than two years ago. Right. You write that. Um, and yet the company is still slow walking this entire process um, and, and trying to prevent their employees from unionizing. What is the status of that situation? Well, <clears throat> there seems to be some real developments in terms of um, bargaining restarting in fact it's a really uh, appropriate we're talking today because right now i believe in atlanta uh representatives from the workers united uh starbucks union are, are actually sitting down uh with corporate representatives for starbucks and they've that's the first time they've done that in uh, i think more than a year so what's happened is after really uh a pretty brutal um brutal opposition, intense opposition from the company for for really the better part of two years, the company has changed its stance and its signal and appears to be more open to bargaining a first contract with baristas and other Starbucks employees around the country. And that is a big deal. However, uh, I think it's worth noting that, you know, they're really, we don't, it's unclear if things really will accelerate. Starbucks has said it wants to negotiate a first contract by the end of 2024, which would be a remarkable turnaround given the real lack of progress over the last two years, right. where they've slowed down the camp, the uh, the unionization, the contracting process in a number of ways, um, including fights in court. Right, and I mean the NLRB has filed over a hundred complaints against Starbucks, but they're such a massive corporation that they have the ability to kind of eat that cost and still slow walk things. Um, right. I mean, have they been? Have they responded to this new NLRB rule that basically says that if companies engage in union busting, that it uh, immediately triggers, uh, I think, either an election. Uh, Bradley, I, I was. Uh, what's the clarity on that? Maybe you know, Jeremy. That new NLRB rule, um, or is it basically pressure from them that that is resulting in them kind of saying now 2024? No, I, I I don't think it's so much about the NLRB, and I think I think more broadly speaking, the NLRB has pretty limited um, tools to sanction companies who break the law um around in terms of their treatment of workers who are unionizing um i think and i'm just speculating you know the company had a new ceo come in that last year we also saw a series of uh one day walkouts and strikes in november by uh hundreds if not thousands of starbucks uh unionized workers around the country and the fights just dragged on and i think starbucks has maybe felt some financial pain um you know, it's hard to say exactly why they've decided to change their tune. And again, you know, we haven't seen substantive progress yet come out of the bargaining, but this is the first day and that's a really good step forward. Um, I would say it, it, the, the new stance from the company probably has more to do with um, its uh, reputational damage it suffered than anything the NLRB uh, has gotcha. done in recent months. And that reputational damage is what you speak about and allude to the fact that Starbucks for years had kind of touted their progressive bona fides, the fact that they are supportive of college education for their employees. Back in, since, you know, I remember when Starbucks was exploding on the scene uh, all across the country, it was always portrayed as a company that was ethical and yet they've engaged in some of the most aggressive union busting that we've seen. 
Yeah, I think it's really, it stands in stark contrast to, I think, um, the company's efforts and other policies it has um, that would be considered more progressive um, by a national corporation. Um, what we've seen in the last few years since the first Starbucks unionized in Buffalo, New York, is one of the most, I think, aggressive national union busting campaigns um, that I can recall. Um, and I think it's because the stakes are so high for the company. Um, and, and we know also from things that Howard Schultz said, who is the former CEO and uh, the founder of Starbucks, that he's really just uh, deeply opposed to unions at the company. And so they really fought tooth and nail um, and ended up in court. And the NLRB found in the workers' favors, favor dozens of times um, in terms of illegal uh, actions by the company. Um, so, you know, I think the stakes are really high, high and I think it's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to remain hopeful uh, that what comes out of today's sessions and what comes out of the next few months really does represent progress in the contract negotiation uh, process. If they get a first contract this year or even next year, that would be a historic moment, I think, for the labor movement in this country. Um, so just to back up a second, you started off by mentioning the VW victory. Um, what, why this is so important and I, I, why I wanted to look a little kind of check in with the article I wrote, both at Trader Joe's and REI, is that the retail sector is, is just has been hard to unionize. And part of that has to do with you have these companies where they have hundreds of stores around the country, but they're different workplaces. Mm. It's just a tough it's a tough slog as opposed to one large auto plant, which I don't mean to say that's easy. That's also very hard. But I think for these retail companies, it's been really hard for unions to make um, inroads and for workers to really uh, successfully step up and organize. And and that's in, in part also uh, due to the fact that, as you say, at one plant, you can basically have trust building between workers, a uh, conversations that you can have either, you know, uh, in, in person or through your social networks at the plant that you're working at versus smaller stores. And there have been hundreds um, of stores that engaged in the strike and did labor actions at, for Starbucks in particular. Um, but they're they're all that it's very much smaller workplaces, as you say, and then way more widely dispersed. And the same goes for Trader Joe's REI. Yeah, and part of it is the high turnover rate, which the retail industry more generally has. Um, and when you have more workers coming and going, it's harder to build and sustain a union campaign. Uh, and at, and that's been true for a while in the retail sector. Obviously, the low wages ha have something to do with that, which is, of course, what these workers are fighting for is wage, uh, among other things, is wage increases. Uh, but when you have high turnover rates, um, that just makes it harder um, to sustain a successful campaign. Starbucks is also, and I think did Trader Joe's join it, challenging the NLRB's authority at the Supreme Court. They, uh, th There was a case that was heard either yesterday or today on this. Um, What's yep. the status of that challenge? Well, so there's sort of two two things going on, and, and it gets into some arcane legal stuff, and I, I don't want to get into the weeds too much, but uh, there's sort of two tracks. And one is the SpaceX-led uh, lawsuit, which is really more directly challenging the constitutionality of the NLRB. And they filed that lawsuit in Texas in a, an area with a lot of sort of hard-right activist judges. Um, Starbucks... Trader Joe's and Amazon have, have in different ways signaled support for that lawsuit uh, in their own filings relative to, to the union campaigns they've faced. However, Starbucks has not officially joined the SpaceX lawsuit. What happened yesterday, and I think this is great to talk about because it, it really kind of, you know, it's almost like, you know, there's parallel pictures here. Today, like I said, Starbucks has resumed bargaining with workers. That's great. Yesterday, they were... Uh, I believe it was yesterday, the Supreme Court heard a case yeah. that Starbucks pushed. And in that case, what they're really trying to do is curtail the NLRB's ability to force the reinstatement of workers who were illegally fired. And it looks like from the reports I've read of, of the Supreme Court hearing yesterday that Starbucks uh, will probably prevail in that case. Um, yeah. So that's a little different. That's not the case where, you know, the NLRB is going to be blown up, but it will, I think, 
um, curtail the NLRB's ability uh, with its pretty limited tool set to force companies to take back the workers that they should not have fired. Is there recourse for them uh, or potential recourse for Starbucks, Trader Joe's delaying these negotiations with the union and, and kind of dragging their feet? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great question, and I think it gets to the heart of, of what's been so challenging um, about these union campaigns is that it, it gets at the the structure the the nature of the national legal infrastructure, the the laws that are in place around the country at the federal level. It there's very little that the NLRB or a union can do to force a company to bargain in good faith, to really come to the table and have real conversations to move the ball forward and toward a first contract. So, um, you know, that's what makes the, these have really dragged on across these different companies now for about two years, uh, which is a lot of time. Um, and over that time, you know, people get demoralized. There's a lot of turnover. So there's a lot of delay strategies, but the, the short answer is that, um, you know, the government can't, the NLRB really doesn't have the ability to, to they, they can, they can uh, um, meet out, I would say, s small fines. You know, these are basically, you know, no money to a company like Starbucks. Right. And so that just doesn't force change. And, and uh, turning uh, away from Starbucks just for a second to touch on Trader Joe's and REI, um, where are they at in their uh negotiations yeah. with their employees they're unionizing yeah and and i think um I, I went back and i talked to them after the news about starbucks um resuming the negotiations um so the short answer is i think they're they're not as far along there aren't as many rei store stores and trader joe's stores that are unionized um there are now five uh i think it's four or five trader joe's stores and now there are 10 REI locations around the country that have unionized. Um, so not a huge number, but they have steadily kept the momentum going. And there was actually just a successful election, election in California of another REI site last month. And so I talked to, to workers involved with these campaigns and you know they just talk about these bargaining sessions where really nothing happens. Um, they're, they're, they're just, they never really get to substantive issues with the union representatives or the, the lawyers representing the company. Um, they still don't have really any uh, contractual details worked out. There are a couple with um, uh, REI for the store in Manhattan. But again, part of what's so hard here is that, you know, the companies are, are requiring, they want to have separate negotiations for each store location. And so um, mm. that alone just drags things out. And that, and what's different with Starbucks now, and this is really promising, again, we'll see what happens, is that the, the company has signaled a willingness to negotiate a national framework for a contract. And instead of having like 400 different co contracts, they'll have a kind of a template that could be used at all the stores that are unionized. And that can help speed things up. So, you know, I think Trader Joe's and REI are, are, are definitely further, um, are not as far along. Um, and what I think is really going to be interesting to see this year is how much does what we, does progress if it occurs on the Starbucks front, how much does that impact uh, movement with REI and Trader Joe's? Will that maybe make Trader Joe's and REI's corporate leaders be more um, conciliatory and say, well, you know what? If Starbucks ended up playing ball with the union, then maybe we should just cut our losses and and get back to the table for to really move the needle on this. And and there are also more stores. Like tw uh, you wrote in your piece that uh, Baris is at, at twenty one Starbucks stores are have have declared that they're going to be unionizing. Uh, there's another effort in California for REI. Trader Joe's in Chicago, like yep. that also puts pressure, I would imagine, on the company, the more stores that move in this direction. Yeah, and that's kind of where I, I landed with my article and talking to, to the worker organizers, is that I, I, I feel like the continued pressure, momentum to organize more stores, I think, especially at Starbucks, because as you just mentioned, there was a, I think in the same day in February earlier this year, uh, 21 st additional Starbucks stores announced their intent to unionize. 
And I think that just signals to the company that this is this fight is not going away, and we we can't just wait them out, you know. Which I think has been the strategy. So, um, you know, I think the continued momentum with Trader Joe's and REI is only going to sort of, I think, force or hopefully change the dynamic um, as time goes on. Well, uh, Jeremy Gantz, contributing editor of In These Times, the piece is called Two Years In, These Progressive Companies Still Haven't Negotiated First Union Contracts. Uh, everyone should be reading In These Times to keep up on labor news, as well as you've, there have been some great pieces that you guys have done over there on, on Israel and Gaza. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Emma.